Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today on a rather wet day, I'm afraid. Um, today I'm bringing you a box that um, was inspired by one that Crafty Caroline Creates uh, had made a little while back. Um, and she um, made a beautiful box and I just thought it was really pretty. And when I got my vibrant vases, I... I just thought this is beautiful and I always think that it's just boring to keep stamping vases and flowers um, you know on a card and stuff so I thought well I'll have a go and and then I saw Caroline's box and I thought vibrant vases would look fantastic on that and so as you can see it's all stamped then there's just the ribbon in the lid it's quite a simple box quite nice and tall it stands four inches in height and it's two and a half by two and a half so it's a good size and like I said I think it's really pretty and our beautiful um, metallic edge trim is just perfect it just adds that little bit to it ideal for a candle um, any kind of maybe Easter or Mother's Day treat anything like that um, and obviously you could alter it as well to make it a Christmas one probably a little bit late now but there is still a few days so you could make them um, but yeah I'm going to show you how to make it so for the base um, I'm using thick whisper white cardstock here and the first thing we're going to do is on the short side we're going to score at two and a half inches and then we're going to come back to our scoring in a moment because we are going to do our stamping before we do any more scoring so this is basically the guideline that I have for the bottom of the box here so that you don't stamp beyond that um, so it obviously and it gives you a nice straight line to work on so I've laid up all my stamps on my blocks ready because I knew that otherwise it would take forever for me to start doing this and then I thought shall I prep one ready and then I thought no oops we've gone out of focus there we go um I thought shall I prep one ready and then I thought no actually I'll show you actually how fairly quick it is why are we going out of focus continually let me just check my camera so it's on autofocus there we go let's hope it doesn't continue okay so I'm using the granny apple green and this beautiful leaf image for my vase and I'm just going starting off at the edge and then I'm just giving myself, you know, eyeballing equal distances along this score line and just stamping this gorgeous box, uh, sorry, this gorgeous vase onto there. So that's that one cleaned. I then have this solid one that obviously fills it in and I'm just going to be stamping this one off and then lining up. I probably should have done this actually a bit better because now you're just going to have my head in the shot all the time I'm trying to line it up but I'm simply just stamping the same colour just stamping off over the top of my vases so as I say you can see that <coughs> excuse me is a fairly quick process so that's the vase done then next up is my flowers that I'm actually going to stamp in um, smoky slate but I'm going to stamp it off first so again I have this beautiful flowered image and I'm simply stamping off and then placing them over the top of the vase and again as you can see this is why you you kind of have to guesstimate and leave enough space just over between your vases for them to not overlap too much so that's that bit done get rid of my grey granite uh, sorry smoky slate and then I have fresh fig for this one so this one was berry burst this one I'm using fresh fig and if you look closely you'll see that actually the um, infill doesn't fill it in completely but I actually quite like that look so again going with the <coughs> fresh fig excuse me and I'm just going to ink it up and I'm actually going to stamp it off because I think otherwise it's going to be too dark and I'm just trying to eyeball where this goes because it's not quite as simple but again it doesn't need to be perfect with it being not a complete um, 
solid filling in image so you actually can get away with being a bit sort of off if you like so again quick clean that one off and then I want my I'm just going to put this away briefly I want my granny apple green back and I've just got the leaves leaves image here and I'm just going to go around if I can line this one up and then just go round filling in the leaves can't actually see that well so I'm hoping that I'm getting them fairly lined up that one wasn't very where anywhere near nor was that one let's try again oh, okay you get the idea <laughs> so I'm going to pop that away too and now we've done all of that you see we can finish our scoring so bringing back in my scoreboard and now you've got that beautiful image and we're simply going to score along the long side at two and a half five seven and a half and ten sorry I realized I didn't give my centimeter measurements before so when you score the short side it's two and a half inches which is six and a half centimeters your DSP is six and a half by sorry cardstock is six and a half by ten and a half inches which is sixteen and a half by twenty seven and a half centimeters we then score the long side at two and a half five seven and a half and ten inches which is sixteen and a half thirteen 19 and a half and 26 centimeters right done that bit get that out of the way so then we need to do our folding and burnishing so i'm just gonna give these a nice burnish here because it is the thick card stock it might just need a little more to keep it nice and crisp And the last little one just like that so then we just need to cut up the bottom sections why oh, that felt all very funny then made my it was almost as if I was cutting something else it just went really funny that was strange so yeah just cut up the bottom ones keep them straight unless you've made a complete hash of one which is bizarre um, and then this little skinny piece here we're just going to cut away and I'm just going to create a very small wedge there and a very small wedge off the top piece there okay so grab my tear and tape wherever the end may have gone there it is so I'm just going to grab some tear and tape along there I'll grab my piercing tool and just take the backing off there we go fold my box over and then just give it a nice press so that's the back so as we know we do the back no actually I'm going to change that up do the sides then the back and I'm actually going to use some of my wet glue on this so I always like to add an extra bit of glue here because I just sometimes think that I'm not not convinced that these stick um, you know when you start to put all the sections down sometimes they just have these bits that gape and I don't like that so I like to glue them all pop him over and you can either put your hand inside get your bone folder give it all a nice good press down so there is my beautiful box pop my glue over here out of the way if I can get it to now stand there we go and then pop this to one side because we need to do our lid so again I'm using fresh fig here and this is six and a half by six and a half inches which is 11 and a half by 11 and a half centimeters back in with my fresh fig and I'm just again using the outline of the flowers and I'm just going to sort of start at the center 
and then just randomly stamp all around the cardstock just filling in the gaps as you go twisting your stamp so that they go in different directions and not all the same <laughs> and then just do those edge bits I'm not too concerned about these bits because I know that this will be sort of the inside and cut away but again it just sort of shows you there we go Give that clean these dark colors really do pigment your uh, the, sorry the pigment does stain your stamps but it doesn't affect them at all um, they still work perfectly well okay so once you've stamped your lid we then need to oops we then need to put do our scoring but as always if I can find it you need to have a shim of matching cardstock so I'm using thick whisper white so I've got my whisper white thick whisper white here and then we are simply going to score at one and two inches which is two and a half and five centimeters and we just do that on all four sides I do like stamping tone on tone I think it gives us such a fabulous effect and it's so easy so in reality then you only need you know the one colored cardstock one ink one stamp and you've got an array of amazing things that you can achieve with it I love it okay so there we have it so again we're going to fold and burnish these score lines and this is in, you've realized is going to be a reinforced lid which basically means that it has double the thickness around the sides okay so once we've done all of that we then need to do some cutting so if I'm going to start with these four squares here nearest me I'm going to cut down the centre part and then I'm going to cut down the inside one okay so we have two panels like this you will have seen that these have been done a few times so hopefully once you've seen me do them you'll, you can remember from before so we're now going to get rid of this one completely and then we're going to cut a small wedge into that side as well this one that's left we're going to cut in half and then create a wedge out of this one and then we're going to cut a small wedge out of there as well so you're left with this one tab so we're going to do exactly the same on the opposite side here so cut down both of the uh, score lines cut that away and create a wedge cut this one in half and cut your wedges and then cut a wedge out of that side and then we're going to turn it round and do exactly the same on the other side so again you notice that I'd got a little dink out of here didn't matter because I knew that it was going to be cut away so cut down the two. Oh, sorry itchy nose cut down the two cut the next one in half and then we cut our wedges okay and then the last one again down the two sides and again if you remember on one of my previous videos I think I was saying cut cut wedge 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 and oops wedge I think I made a little song up about it right get rid of my rubbish as you know me and my tidiness and that's what we have left our little lid and so all we need to do now is do some adhering so I'm going to flip it over and we're going to put tear and tape on all of these long pieces here so all of the long sides just pop our tear and tape on and then you have two options you can either put tear and tape on the panel below 
So you can put tear and tape along these, sorry, along these ones so that when you fold these in, you've got tear and tape stick it too. You can use wet glue or you can flip it over and you can add a strip of tear and tape to these tabs. So you can do it numerous ways as long as everything gets adhered then it doesn't matter. <laughs> And it is a pure fluke that every time I cut this tear and tape, it's the right length, trust me. Okay, so once I've got my tear and tape on these tabs, so the first thing I want to do is take it off and close these inside. And I'm just making up the box as I would normally. So again, this one folds over onto that side. Now you'll notice when I do my normal boxes, I put this now on and make sure it fits. But I am confident that this one doesn't need it. But if you if it makes you feel better, I shall show you. So you pop it on. The only trouble with tear and tape is obviously you need to be careful because once it's stuck, boy is it stuck. So that's that one. And then this one. It's a little bit fillier, but as I say, I'm quite happy that this is going to fit. So that's that piece done. And then all we need to do now is take the backing off these pieces and fold them inside. I hope all you lovely people are all ready for the festivities that are due to begin in just a few days. I actually can happily say that I am as as I've mentioned before, I do film my videos in, in advance, days in advance, so I have to make sure I'm prepared. But as these, as this video comes out to you, I um, have my food shopping done. Um, and, and I'm actually, today is my filming day. So I have several videos to do. And I have, um, so that's it but once I've done today I will be done well into January so hopefully a lot of my tutorials will be done ready I'm just going to pop this on to show you this is where it all goes wrong because I didn't do it the way I normally do <laughs> oh heavens above right there we go that's that one on so there's my lid pretty lid on my box but obviously now we need to add our ribbon so yes yeah, so um, I'm using the silver metallic ribbon on this one um, measure your length to just tuck inside the lid there and then to go round there um, so yes yeah, so as this tutorial comes out to you I have my food shopping done I have all bowl two presents left to wrap Two presents left to wrap, the rest are done. And um, yeah, I'm I'm in a pretty pretty good place now. I'm I'm ready, raring to go, and ready to celebrate the festivities. Um, sadly, all my family are working Christmas Eve and they go back the day after Boxing Day. Um, it's no stranger to me for people to be working during the festivities. I um, previously had a job that I worked shifts and had to work either Christmas or New Year whichever way my shift fell so I totally understand and I do feel for those people that have have to work over the Christmas period because it is pretty rubbish but yes yeah, so I'm all ready <laughs> so as you can see I'm just adding some little bit of tear and tape to the ends of these and then I'm just adhering them inside the box lid. I was going to say I don't know where all this glitter is coming from but I suspect it's off this. So just make sure obviously that it's nice and straight and then in fact I'll leave it off while I do my bow. My bow is the very simple um, get a length of ribbon that you want to use for your bow. Then you get just a small piece, pop that out of the way, 
and then again back in with some tear and tape onto one end and then just simply create that loop and just try and make sure that you line the sides up of your ribbon so it looks like a continual loop and then with this little piece we're going to put some more tear and tape on this one and then again just wrap this around the center if you can get the end of your tear and tape off there we go so make sure that the join is at the bottom or the back and it's in an equal place so that it will be hidden pop that at the back so that you then pop the center of this over your ribbon and then make sure that it's not where you don't want it and then just simply fold one end over and then the other and if you have just a little bit of excess there at the back you can just give it a trim And then last but not least, tiny little square of tear and tape on the back just to hold it all in place. And then this obviously just sits across your bow. I've not tidied that ribbon up very well, have I? Let me just give that another trim because that looks a bit, a bit untidy. There we go. And then this just sits right on the centre, just give it a press and there you have, oh for goodness sake, I thought we were doing well, and you then have your beautiful boxes in Fresh Fig and Berry Burst with Vibrant Vases. Aren't they beautiful? I hope you like them. Thank you Caroline uh, for your initial um, box that gave me the idea to do it with this one. Hope you like them and I hope you all have a fabulous Christmas and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye.